In 1997, when Disney set out to dub Kiki's delivery service into English, they decided that simply translating the dialogue wasn't enough. American composer Paul Chihara was brought in to adapt Joe Hisaishi's score. He moved cues around to different sync points, filled in gaps with entirely new music, even added counter melodies and accents and other enhancements to the existing music, which means that if you watch the movie in the West in the late 90s or early 2000s, you saw a very different movie than what director Hayao Miyazaki made for Japanese audiences. It especially stands out in the big climactic scene at the end of the movie, which is how I stumbled on this whole thing by accident in the first place. Let's take this scene in the bakery as an example. Here's the Japanese version. Himane. And here's the English dub. Boring. So it seems to me like when the point of a scene is to show that the bakery is quiet and boring, maybe we don't need music to liven it up. As someone who was a kid in America in the 90s, I find this kind of insulting. It feels like there was this constant fear that if they weren't giving kids constant stimulation from all directions, then they'd lose them. And this is 25 years ago. It's not like we can blame social media for this. It wasn't just the music. They did the same thing with the dialogue too. Compare these two versions of when Kiki first arrives in her new town. and lots of cars. And the market! With much hustling and bustling, yes. Oh, Gigi, it's so amazing. And, and just look, look at how many people there are. Did you gain anything from all that chatter that you hadn't already figured out for yourself from just seeing the cars and the market and the people? I discovered this completely by accident. So if you don't know, Shumi wa Nihongo no Benkyo desu. And so last weekend, I watched Kiki's delivery service in Japanese for listening practice. While I was watching, I was thinking about how people have been asking me to make a video about when in a movie to have score and when not to have score. And I thought, how about I make that video with scenes from Kiki as the examples? So while watching, I made a mental note of a few interesting scenes to talk about, including that big one at the finale. A few days later, I started working on the script and going through the movie to make notes. But this time I was going through the English version because I thought that's probably what I'd use for the video. And that's when I started to get confused. <laughs> There were all these scenes that I remembered being interesting specifically because they had no music. But as I'm going through, I'm hearing all this music. And I kind of thought I was losing it for a second, but just to be sure, I checked the Japanese version. And that's when I realized they were totally different. Here, I'll go back and forth between the Japanese version and the American version of the same scene. And just because it's so relevant to this video, I want to mention real quick the new course I've been making with Gavin Leeper about composing music in the style of anime and JRPGs is almost done. More info soon. So in a dissertation for the University of Edinburgh, specifically about this whole localization topic, Daniela Montoya Rodriguez brings up some interesting points. She writes that the modifications remove not only the agency of the audience to identify the feeling, but also decreases the intensity of the emotions evoked by the original audiovisual strategy. When left with silence, it's up to us as the audience to think about how we feel about what just happened in the story. But with music, you're being told not only what to feel, but how intensely to feel it. I feel like it's a pretty good argument for less is more when it comes to deciding how much music to put in a film. I do have to admit though that some of the changes may have been for the better. For example, watch these two versions of the same scene. The original version feels childish and cute, but the newer scoring feels much more mature. And honestly, to me, it feels more appropriate. I have no hard feelings against Paul Chihara. He was hired to do a pretty unusual job and he did it very well. 
My qualms are more with the people who thought this rescoring was necessary in the first place. I want to talk about that big climactic scene at the end. But real quick, first, if you don't know, applications are currently open for the second cohort of the Virtual Composer Summit. It's a seven-week program hosted by myself and composer and sample library wizard Christopher Siu. The program includes weekly masterclasses, personalized feedback sessions, accountability groups, assignments, and more. Some students from the first cohort have said this was the first time they'd managed to go from a blank page to a fully produced and mixed track. And now they have the confidence and a step-by-step -step process for doing it again over and over going forward. Applications are open until October 13th. Check out virtualcomposersummit.com for more info. Okay, let's talk about that ending scene, which was the whole reason I was gonna make a video about this score to begin with. What stood out to me as remarkable in the Japanese version was that this scene is the most intense drama and action we see in the entire movie and it feels like such an easy opportunity for tension music or action music. But instead, we're left with just the sounds of wind and Tombo struggling. In the English version, we get these screeching tremolo violins. And when Kiki is struggling to fly, we originally just heard the sound effects of her bumping into stuff. In the dubbed version, we get these interesting additions. For all these changes, I'm sure people could argue how one way or another is better. So what I think is a more interesting question is how does this align with the director's intentions and how he wanted to tell the story? So let's take a moment to talk about that. Why does any of this matter? Well, it wasn't an accident that the original version of Kiki's Delivery Service had so much silence. When interviewing director Hayao Miyazaki, Robert Ebert brought up these moments of stillness and quiet in his films. Miyazaki responded, we have a word for that in Japanese. It's called ma, emptiness. It's there intentionally. Which makes me wonder what he thought when this... ended up like this. Interestingly, when Disney released Kiki's Delivery Service on DVD in 2010, they went back to the original score. They even took out a lot of those unnecessary lines of dialogue that weren't really adding anything. And I wonder if it's because by then, Miyazaki had an Academy Award and an international reputation, so finally they were respecting his vision? I don't know. But as someone who's both learning Japanese and very purposefully listens to the music in a film, I feel like I was in an oddly specific position to be able to stumble on this. And I feel like that was pretty fortunate. Thank you for watching, as always, and I will see you in the next one.